Okay, uh, good evening to each and everyone. And uh, once again, we are here to study about the book of Revelations. We are now on the sixth trumpet in Revelation chapter 9. And uh, we are trying to dissect each and every single verse in order to fully understand the, the study about the book of Revelations. And the book of Revelation speaks about the things that is going to happen in the future. We are already on the last days, actually on the last of the last of days. And um, we as Christians, we should not neglect the study of the book of Revelation because it is part of the book. The whole book of the Bible is part of the word of God. So we could not skip the study of the book of Revelation because this is the promise of God to all of us who believe in him. He is telling us what are the things that is going to happen here on earth through that book of Revelation. Let us read first the, that part on Revelation chapter 9, verse 13 to 14. You can, uh, you can read on the screen while I'm reading it also for you. Revelation 9, chapter 13, 14. And the sixth angel sounded, he sounded about the trumpet. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying, The sixth angel which had the trumpet loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loose, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year. For to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand. And I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire and hasin and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of the lions, and of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three, the third part of men killed by fire, by smoke, and the brimstone, which is issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents, and had heads with them they do hurt. And the rest of men, which, not, which, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. So that is the one we are going to study tonight. Let us pray. Father, I pray unto you that you bless this word according to your own understanding and knowledge. Reveal us the things that you would like to do here on earth according to your will. And let us uh, study it because we know, Father, that once we are studying your word, you are pleased for that because we are studying what are your plans that is going to do here on earth. Anoint your servant. Cover him by your blood and your anointing, that he might open his mouth, mouth according to your words, according to you. I lift up everything of your Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, the first verse of the Bible is, uh, the first verse of that Revelation chapter 9, verse 13, and the following verses is, the sixth angel, so we already discussed about the fifth angel, which open up the bottomless pit. Remember the last time we discussed about the bottomless pit, how this bottomless pit was there, this uh, abyss, what we call the abyss, when it was started and who are those uh, demons that are in the abyss. So we discussed lots of that matter and then I explained to you how it all started uh, regarding the abyss and then this angel, this uh, star that fallen from heaven, Okay, that uh, he opened the abyss. But here, the sixth angel sounded. Okay, when he sounded, uh, 
there's no stars that Poland, he just blow the trumpet. And when he had blown the trumpet, what happened is uh, John heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before that. Last time I already explained to you that whatever tabernacles that we have here on earth is just a repli replica of the tabernacles that we see in heaven. So th there is a true golden altar in heaven. And th through that golden altar, altar the, the, the blood of Christ was being sacrificed in order for us to have a forgiveness of sins. Remember, here on earth, when uh, you are going to ask forgiveness during the time of the Israelites, you have to bring an animal, either dogs, lambs, sheep, goats, bullocks, uh, calves, so all these things, all these clean animals, but not, not the unclean, like the pigs, because that is abominations in the sight of God. So only clean animals. So when they are offering that, I'm just uh, refreshing you, when they are offering that, they have to check if the animals is clean, without blemish, without spot, without any defi uh, deficiencies, it's clean. So when they found that the animal is clean, perfect, then that's the time the offerer or the person who is offering the lamb will lay his hand on the head of that lamb. Upon laying the, the, hair, the hands on the lamb of that offerer, he is transferring the sins that he is committed and the, the sins that he is confessing through that lamb. That's why there is a sin offering, trespass offering, and burnt offering. They are transferring that. All sins are now passed by to that lamb. And that lamb is innocent. And they will take the blood of the lamb because the blood of the lamb, that is the life of that flesh. Because the penalty of sin is death. So if you order to pay, to pay death, you have to pay life. And that life is innocent. They are taking the blood of the lamb. So once they have taken the blood, what they are going to do, they are uh, sprinkling it in the altar, in the golden altar. Most especially, they will wipe it or uh, put some in the horns, the four horns of the altar, which I will show you later on. And that when that blood was... Uh, sprinkled in that horn, then that appease the sins of that person that has been accepted and then uh, that uh, forgiveness has been released for a temporary uh, notion or temporary time because no blood animals can truly forgive our sins. Because we are not an animal, we are a human being created in the image of God. That is the reason why our Lord Jesus Christ has to come down here on earth because he will be the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb. When John the Baptist said, Behold the lamb of God that take away the sins of the world. So he is the perfect innocent without blemish, without spot, mentioned in First Peter. He's the, his blood is perfect for our uh, atonement, for our sins, for the atonement of our soul. So his life paid the penalty of our sins. And when you believe in his blood, that is in Romans chapter 3, verse 25, by your faith in his blood, you have now the propitiations of your sins. Means... Uh, there is now atonement for your soul. There is now a payment for your penalty of your sins. So that's why in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us. That is incomplete. You have to read verse 7. In verse 7, it's mentioned the blood. Once you have the blood, when you offered already Jesus Christ as your atonement for your soul, that you have laid hands on him, you, you, you already lift up your hands unto him, believe on him, 
that is your sacrifice, ultimate sacrifice for your sins, when you laid hands on him, then that's the time that whatever you confess, God will forgive you. That's why in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, he said, if you confess your sins, he is now faithful and just to forgive your sins because you have now the atonement of your sins, which is the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, regarding this sixth angel, that there is a voice that came out from the four horns of the golden altar, okay? So, apart from that blood that was offered in the golden altar, so this is the sample of this golden altar. This is only a replica, okay? It's not exactly the same that the same in the golden altar in the, the heaven, but somehow we could pick, picturize or we could picture it based on this. So we have this golden horn, okay? So once the priest is coming with that blood, what he's going to do, he will put blood on that golden horn. Okay, he will put blood on that golden horn. When you say when you say gold, as we studied uh, in, in this book of Revelations, uh, gold speaks about deity of uh, honor or a special deity or royalty of a person. Uh, it is uh, something that uh, makes you something special because of that golden or because of that gold. Now the horn, it was first mention in the Bible, the horn in Hebrew is tiren, that means it is the strength, the power or the authority or the, the strength of one, uh, one being. It was first mentioned in Genesis chapter 22 verse 13, and Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering instead of his son. So this speaks, remember, this is the story when Abraham is going to offer his son Isaac. When he's going to offer his son Isaac, he was restrained by God. He was told by God not to continue what he's doing because it is only a test of faith. Now, when he lifted up, up his eyes, he saw the ram that was caught or means it was bounded by the ticket by uh, by which part of his body by his horns because of his horns that was strangled by that ticket he was not able to move because his power is in that horn his strength it is in that horn so god it is speaking that the strength Whatever strength will be offered unto him. So our strength in our life is no other than our Lord Jesus Christ. He is our strength. And our strength was offered unto our Lord Jesus. This is where the horn, for the horn first mentioned in the Bible. And then after that, when God spoke to Moses, he was given instruction on how to do the altar. And this is the one, Exodus chapter 27, verse 2. And thou shalt make a horn of it upon the four corners thereof. His horn shall be of the same, and thou shalt over it with brass. So he's talking about the outer court because the, there is a, a, an altar, sacrificial altar in the outside court and then there's also a golden altar in the inside court. So in both altars, there are horns in four corners as you have seen in the pictures. Then apart from that, in Daniel chapter 8, verse 20 to 21, this is the vision of Daniel, which already came to pass through the king of Persia and to the king of Greece. The realm which thou saw, having two horns, are the kings of Media and Persia. So 
the Bible clearly explained already that the horn speaks about authority, about power, and speaks about the kings. Of course, when you say the kings, you have the authority and the power. And rock and the rough goat, which is the king of Greece, and the great horn that is between his eyes is the first king. So again, he said that the horn speaks about the king. We, I'm trying to explain you all these things because the following chapters that we are going to study, it will speaks about the horn of the dragons. There will be ten horns of the dragons and then three will be plucked out, then another horns will come. And then this small horn will be the greatest of all the horns. So this speaks about the, the king of the, uh, the Antichrist or the king that will rule in this world. Okay. So the horn speaks about authority. And again, I'm telling you, that authority that was given to us, it was the authority that was given by our Lord Jesus Christ. Our authority is coming from our Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible speaks about all to Jesus Christ. It's all focused unto Him. That's why when, when Jesus Christ said to the Pharisees, search the scriptures because the scriptures speaks about me. So when we are interpreting the Bible, we should be connecting it always to our Lord Jesus Christ because it's all about our Lord Jesus Christ. Now in Exodus chapter 29, what they are going to do now, and thou shalt take of the blood of the bullock, this is what I explained you a while ago, and put it on upon the horns of the altar with thy finger and pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. So there is a blood that they are, uh, he's putting it on upon the horns, as you have seen in the picture, he put. So what we are trying to say that our life, okay, is in being entrusted to the strength and the authority of our Lord Jesus Christ. Because he is our strength and he is our authority. For example, what authority do I have? The authority I have is through our Lord Jesus Christ in teaching the word of God. When the, the Pharisees is asking John the Baptist, what authority that you have that you are baptizing these people? Are you the Christ? He's telling, I'm not the Christ, okay? The authority that I have, I am the voice of the wilderness, means the authority that he has is the fulfillment of the prophecies that was given by prophet Isaiah. That there will be a voice in the wilderness crying out, prepare the way of the Lord because he is coming. That's why all the last days also, before the coming of the dreadful day of the Lord, the second coming of our dread, uh, the dreadful day of the Lord, the great terrible day of the Lord, the, he will send his uh, prophet Elijah again. Actually, that would be, again, we are going to discuss about the two witnesses. He will send again the spirit of Elijah in before coming of the second coming. When he, the first advent, the first coming, when before he comes, the spirit of Elijah was already with John the Baptist. Now the second coming, again before his coming, Second coming, the spirit of Elijah, or either Elijah himself, we don't know yet, will come first before the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. So there is a consistency of the Bible regarding on that. That before coming of the Lord, there is always the Elijah, who will always prepare the way of the Lord, the way of his coming. Now, what why is this there is a voice coming out from the horns of the altar and who are those voices? why there is voice coming from the horns of the altars and whose voices are these okay in revelation chapter 6 verse 9 and 10 we remember we studied about this one about the opening of the fifth seal it will be refreshing again to you when we had opened the fifth seal when he had opened the fifth seal I saw under the altar. So which altar he's talking about? The golden altar. What he saw? 
the souls of them that we were slain of the word of God and for the testimony of which they held. Remember, I explained to you that he saw the souls, but after Revelation chapter 7, he saw the multitudes. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on earth? So there was a blood sacrifice regarding the martyrs of those who were slain by the word of God. So there is a martyr's blood, that's what we call. And this martyr's blood, they are crying to judge and to avenge their blood. Okay? So there is a voice. And those voices are coming for those people that was being martyred by the word of God. And in biblical reference for this one is in Genesis chapter 4. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 10, and he said, God said, why hast thou done? He is talking to Cain. The voice of thy brother's blood cries unto me from the ground. Okay. So remember the story that Cain and Abel, okay. Cain and Abel, there is a story between Cain and Abel. The story of Cain and Abel, when they, when there is a jealousy happened, you know that Cain killed Abel and the blood spilled on the ground. He was called as the first martyr of God. He is the first martyr of God because the first martyr of God is now the voice that is crying for justice. It is the voice that is crying for justice. Now that is the reason why those who are being martyred in, in, in the fifth seal, they are the voice that is crying on the golden altars. They are the voice that is crying on the golden altars. That, that is the martyr's blood. So when, when they cried the voice, what happened? Saying, so the voice, remember the voice uh, from the four corners of the, uh, from the four corners of the golden lamb, uh, the golden altar, speak, he said to the sixth angel, okay, saying to the sixth, and saying to his, to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river, you face. Okay, so from that voice, came from the instruction of the God, of, of the Father in heaven to lose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. So there are two important things that we are going to discuss here. The loosing of the four angels and bounding in the great river Euphrates. Now, when you say loosing the four angels that are bound, so these are the angels for sure that they are the fallen angels. Because there are the fallen angels that have been bound in chains, as mentioned in First uh, Second Peter when we discussed last time, Second Peter chapter two, verse four, that there are bounds in chains and waiting for their judgment. So these four angels were bound in chains in the great river you face. So four speaks about universality. Four about four speaks about the north, east, west, and south, the all parts of the the world. So these four angels will be loosened in the great river Euphrates. Now we are going to discuss what is Euphrates. Where is the Euphrates first mentioned in the Bible? Euphrates first mentioned in the Bible was in Genesis chapter 2 verse 14. This is about the Garden of Eden. It is one of the river, the four rivers that was mentioned by God in the Garden of Eden, the last river that was mentioned. The first mention is the, the Pison, the Pison, the river Pison that is in the land of Havilah. And the other one is, the second river is Gihon, okay, Gihon, which is in the whole land of Ethiopia. So from that, you can uh, clearly see that there is a land of Havilah, land of Gihon, uh, land of Ethiopia, and the third river is Hidikel. In the other translation will be Tigris, okay, that is which goes toward the east of Assyria. 
east of Assyria, so you know that there is the land of Assyria, and the fourth is river Euphrates. Okay? So, and the other thing is in Genesis 15, verse 18, in the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land from the river Egypt, from the river of Egypt up to the great river of Euphrates. So, the land from the river of Egypt, the Nile River, let's talk about that, is the Nile River, from the river of Egypt up to the river of Euphrates, that is the land that is covenant by God to Abraham that will be unto thy seed. When we are going to discuss further on the revelation, you can see how big is that land that God will establish for the seed of Abraham. We'll come to that, okay? But that we are uh, showing you is just a preliminary. Now, this is Assyria. So, from the east of Assyria is the land of uh, the river Kibikel. That is Tigris River, okay? That is Tigris River. And this is the river Euphrates. And this is uh, the land of, uh, uh, what do you call that, that the land? Havila, and then the land of Ethiopia. We know that the land of Havila is in this part. In this part. And the land of Ethiopia is in this lower part, okay? Now, we read in Genesis chapter 25, verse 18, that from the river of Egypt, so if this is Egypt, from this river of Egypt, up to the river of Euphrates, this land will be inherited by the seed of Abraham. We'll come to that when we study in the further chapters of Revelations. I think that would be Revelations 19, 20, something like that. So this is the land of Havilah which I'm talking about. If this is the land of Babylon, this is Egypt. And this is somehow not accurate, okay? Because during those times, the land is still intact together. They, they are connected to one another. There are no spaces that are connected to one another. So if this river Euphrates, you, you, river Kidical or Tigris, and then he's telling that this is the river Python, and... Uh, this is the river Gihon. So this is the land that is promised to the seed of Abraham. I'm going to ask you, are you also the seed of Abraham? I'll give you an assignment. Find the verse in the Bible that would show that you are the seed of Abraham. So now, we are reading the Revelation chapter 9 that saying to the four, to the, to the six angel that loose now the four angels in, that is bound in the Euphrates River. So this is Euphrates River. This is Turkey. This is Iraq. This is Babylonian, this is the Babel, Babel uh, the Babylonian Empire, and right from here is what we call Iran. So this is Iraq, this is Turkey, this is Iran, and this is Jerusalem. So from here, in this Euphrates uh, River, the four angels have been bound. Remember, okay, I told you that there is a great significant event that happened during the flood uh, of Noah, okay? There are lots of angels and demons have been cast out to the Tartarus and lots of angels have been bound prepared for the judgment. This is the Tower of Babel, which started all these things about the Babylon, the Babylonian uh, belief, okay? And that's why when everything started from here, the spirit of Babylon, that uh, the Nimrod, all these things, the, the mother and child belief came from this part. Okay? 
went to Egypt to different parts of the world. That's why later on, when we are going to study the book of Revelation, uh, later the uh, later chapters of the book of Revelation, we will study about the Babylon, the mystery of Babylon. Remember Babylon in, in this part because this is the part of Iraq. This is also the part of Assyria. This is part of Nineveh. Okay, remember during those times, Assyria is the one who conquered the northern uh, Israel. And by conquering of the northern Israel, they adulterated, consummated the belief of the northern Israel that was called now the Samaritans. Okay, there is the mixture of belief between the Sumerian beliefs and the Jewish beliefs, they mingled with it, okay? So from the Tower of Babel, this is now the Noah's Ark. Now, this is from the Noah's Ark, but where is Noah during those period? He is in this part. When the flood started, Noah was in this area. When the flood started, Noah was in this area. That's why when the flood started, the angels were bound in this Euphrates river also in this area. The angels were bound in this area because this area is very what iconic to them. I don't know why it is very iconic because one thing, we know that, that the Garden of Eden is divided into four rivers. Tigris, Euphrates, Tison, and then the Gihon. So they, they they, some of the theology, some of the biblical scholars, they're telling that the Garden of Eden is hidden within the land of Babylonian or the land of Iraq. That is uh, only theory, okay? But I could say, because if this is Euphrates, this is Tigris, this is the Egypt, which is the, uh, uh, the, the land of Havilah, the, the land of Assyria, <coughs> And the land of Gihon, the, the, the river Gihon. So therefore, this might be the whole Garden of Eden as well. But it was concealed by the power of God because it was in a spiritual realm. It is concealed that no one can, can find it. But anyhow, that is only theories. Those are only opinionated type, type of thing. So that is the reason why the four angels are coming from this particular area the river Euphrates. So the four angels were loose, which were prepared, okay? This is now the purpose of the four angels. The four angels were loose for what? To prepare, okay? To prepare for what? For an hour, a day, a month, and a year, okay? When you are going to add that, in, in a calendar, for the Jewish calendar, every month comprises of 30 days. So in 12 months, that is equivalent to 360 days. Plus another month, that is equivalent to uh, 390 days. Plus one day, that is another three, 391 days and one hour. So when the four angels will be loose, this is the preparation time for what? To slay the third part of men. Why there is a need for preparation to to slay the third part of men. Because in Revelation 6, uh, 9, 16, the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 thousand, and I heard the number of them. That is equivalent of 200 million armies. So they are preparing for 391 days for the millions of armies. And that is their preparations. They are preparing for that. And they are going to kill the third part of men. How they were going to be killed, we'll go to the next verse for that. But what I'm trying to say, the four angels will be the spirits or the, the, the beings that will instruct men in order to prepare these two, 200 million armies. Some of the teachers, they are telling that these 200 million armies are coming from China. Because nowhere on earth, in the nation of all nations, 
that could prepare 200 million armies except China. They might be true that China will be having 200 million armies, but it doesn't conclude that China will be the one who is having the 200 million armies for the preparation of the war or the battle in Armageddon also, or the battle, the final battle, because one third of that will be killed. The men will be killed for that, one third will be killed. Now, we don't know that that one third will be killed for that is these 200 million armies, we cannot say. Uh, that would be because that would be the battle of Armageddon. When, when we are going to do for the battle of Armageddon, who is the losing part? Of course, it's not the God's uh, army. It is the army of the Antichrist. So this might comprise also the one third of the, the, the population. We don't know. We cannot say only. But one thing we're going to start. Uh, we are going to study that as well. The, the battle of Armageddon. Armageddon. But here, what I'm trying to say is, these four angels, they are the one who leads all these armies gathering together where? In river, Euphrates River. Because once they pass over the Euphrates River, that is the one that they are declaring war now to the nation of Israel. So they are going to declare war to the nation of Israel. Because uh, Euphrates River is very iconic to these old times also in the Old Testament. So 200 million armies are being led by these four angels. So how they are going to kill? So this is, this is Euphrates River. Remember right now, up to this area is the land of Iran. <laughs> and if they are gathering together here in the land of Iran, because uh, uh, there is a, what we call a treaty between Russia, Iran, and Turkey. So there are a treaty that uh, they are in one when it comes to mili military uh, objectives. So we don't know that either the, the militaries or the armies from Turkey the armies from the northern part, which is Russia, the, uh, the armies of the eastern part will be India, China, will be gathering all together. That will be four angels. Okay? That will be four angels that he will be gathering all this together, these armies in the land of uh, near that Euphrates River. Once they cross over, that is already a declaration of war to the land of, uh, to, to Israel. Because in Revelations, further chapters in Revelations, this river you face will be dried up. It will be dried up. It will be clear that the armies could pass by on this river. And actually, they are also building dams on that area. Now, so the four angels, are the one who is gathering these 200 million armies. So continu continuation of that, and thus I saw the horses in the vision. So this is now the vision of John in the, what he saw of that armies. And them that sat on them having the breastplates of fire and hasid and limestone, and the heads of the horses were as the heads of the lions, and of their mouths issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. So, out of the mouth of the faces like, like a lion coming fire, smoke, and brimstone. This is only a picture. If we are going to picture it, it will be looking like that, okay? But I don't think that this will be the same because uh, John is just show, uh, looking on the vision on his time, period of time. And if he's looking for the vision that is far, far in the future, whatever technologies that is in the future, he could not explain it by his, during, during his time. How can, for example, if I am living during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, which, does have, does, uh, which they don't have tanks, they don't have artilleries, uh, artilleries they don't have helicopters, they, they don't have jet fighters. 
And I saw that vision during those times in the time of our Lord Jesus Christ. I saw this type of military equipment, helicopters, tanks, artilleries, and these jet fighters. How can I explain that? Then I will explain that by looking what is the best or uh, what do you say, the nearest on what is present on my time. So he might be looking the same thing, but it's not exactly the lion said, okay? There will be lots of things. Thanks is from his mouth is releasing fire, smoke, and brimstone. Okay? That would be one part. Alterilis or the, the canyons, okay, that speaks about maybe the tails. We, we don't say, we cannot say, okay? In continuation of that verse, by this three, which three he's talking about? was the third part of man killed. So the third part of man <coughs> that was killed by this tree, which is by fire, smoke, and brimstone. People will be killed by fire, smoke, and brimstone. During the time when uh, John was seeing this vision, he doesn't know about guns also. He don't know about these guns. What, once they are, they are firing guns, you can see fire, you can see the smoke, and you can see the, 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 the brimstone that is coming from that, uh, from that um, artillery, so from that uh, canyons, from that uh, guns. What kind of guns? We don't know if they are using machine guns. I don't know exactly, but these technologies will appear based on what John saw in his vision. So the third man will be killed by fire and by smoke and by this, uh, by the brimstone, which is issued out of their mouths. So out of the mouths of these armies, they killed the third part of men, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. So mouth and in the tails, for their tails were like unto serpents and had heads with them they do hurt. So from the mouth and from the tail, from the head, from to the tails, there are mouths that is releasing fire, smoke, and brimstone. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 24, then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. So this is one, one part of the judgment that was being done in the land of Sodom and Gomorrah through brimstone and fire. And also in Psalms 11 verse 6, Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire and brimstone, and an horrible tempest, this shall be the portion of their cup. So this will be, when that would be accomplished in Revelations, what we are talking about, that would be also the fulfillment that was written in Psalms 11 6. In continuation, so the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, what that plagues by these armies, by fire, smoke, and brimstone, they are not being killed, they were dispelled, or they were able to survive. Remember, the fifth trumpet we discussed that they were being uh, stinged by the locusts. And there were been problems in their skin, and they decided to die, but they could not die. That was in fifth trumpet. In fifth, fifth trumpet. But here on the sixth trumpet, one third of them had been killed by the fire, smoke, and uh, um, fire, smoke, and brimstone. But those men that were not killed means they were alive, they repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, idols of gold, silver, brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. So let me ask you one thing. Is 
the church of God will be still here during this period. Remember, when, when uh, we opened the fifth trumpet, they were being instructed not to hurt what? Those people that has been sealed by God in their foreheads. And what about the church of God? What about the believers? It was not mentioned because believers are not present anymore. Because this is already the trumpet call. A call for, uh, for the final battle. And these scenarios we are seeing, this is the scenarios that is happening down here on earth. And there is 144 children of Israel that has been sealed by the, by the Spirit of God. Okay, and they are most probably in Israel because these 200 armies also they are going to battle against Israel. But we will go into studying deeper on that once we go further on the chapters in Revelation. This now will be the end of Revelation chapter 9. Then we'll be going now on Revelation chapter 10 and 11, which is now the seventh trumpet. What is going to happen on the seventh trumpet? But the, the thing that is pointed out here, not here, is they repented not, even though they are seeing all these things. Though, meaning the, the offer of salvation is still present during those times. Because the 144 seals, the duty is to preach the gospel that Jesus Christ is the true God. And they still accept not. That Jesus Christ is the true God, then what will happen? They will face, they are going to reap the judgment and the wrath of God. So that will end our uh, discussion on the sixth trumpet. And if I miss something, you can uh, uh, try to ask. Might be I miss something so that I could. Uh, Explain further regarding what we are discussing about the sixth trumpet, the sixth trumpet of God that was been blown uh, during the time of revelations. Okay, so it's now open for uh, questions. If you still have some questions or clarifications regarding this, Pastor, I have uh, one question. Is the four sure. angels bounded? since the time when they are thrown out from heaven? They might be bounded during the time of flood also. Because when they are falling, falling down here on, what happened when, when, uh, when the devil or the devil or Satan or Lucifer, along with his third part of the angels, uh, committed a rebellion or sin against God. They were thrown down here on earth. They are thrown down, that is already a punishment. They are not anymore uh, welcome on heaven. Their throne or their, uh, their punishment, they are thrown here on earth. Now why the angels, some of the angels have been bounded? Because what happened is they are going extreme to the mandate of God that they should not allow to do. Even though they are now, they are bounded here on earth, they are, they are certain portions that they are not allowed to do. For example, when Lucifer was uh, uh, present during the council in the sons of God in the book of Job, God instructed Lucifer or Satan, you can do anything to Job, but you should not kill him. Now, he has now the authority to do anything to Job, but not to kill him. That is the same thing with the other angels that has been called. Okay, you can do these things, but you are not allowed to do certain things. Now, if they do certain things beyond what God intended them to do, then they will be bounded by that. They will be in chain for that because they are doing more than or they are do doing against what God intended them to do here on earth. And that is the reason why 
they are bound and they are being released again to do what they are things that they are doing okay that would be one part of the interpretation the other part may be they are already bounded during the flood because they are uh, they are bounded in order not to do the things that were they are doing and then they will be released during this period or again in order for them to do what are the things that they are doing so that would be another interpretation for that so so pastor uh, they are the fallen angels who left their inhabitat or is uh, spiritual no they are fallen angels they are the fallen angels fallen angels that have the power to to become like men you can see them like men but are unaware that they are they are the angels remember in hebrews chapter 13 when uh, paul is telling that uh, do, do not neglect to entertain strangers because you might be entertaining uh, the strangers that but you might be unaware have entertained and give hospitality to an angel so in the same thing in uh, second corinthians chapter 11 be not be deceived because the devil himself or satan himself can transform into the angel of light so he could transform himself into a human being so all things are uh, mis it is possible for them there's a possibility for them to be men but still they are in uh, in an angel part angels doesn't need to occupy the body of men uh, like what the demons is doing the demons they occupy the the flesh of men the body of person because they need some they need some uh, uh, vessels to occupy but angels there is no what such called the angel possession. There is no such thing as the angels. You are being possessed by the angels. No, because angels can be, can, they could transform themselves into like a human being and get in intermarriages with the, the daughters of men. So angels does not possess human beings because they themselves can transform into a human beings. The demons they possess because they seek a vessel in order for them to do the things what they would like to do so that is the difference between the angels and the demons the angels and demons the reason why i ask pastor because of the time okay. of the flood nobody was left alive except for those uh family of noah yes so, so that is spiritual when they are bounded uh, okay that's why that's in mention there is also nephilim after the flood yes as mentioned in the bible of uh, the bible that after this still there are nephilim the fallen ones if you watch the city of angels uh, from time to time some angels uh, forsaking the first first habitat their uh, first state and, and and converting themselves into a human being that is also the possibility that's why after this there are also nephilims and after this also the seed of the serpent also will be there that's why the the bible says again i'm i'm trying to explain that our lord jesus christ came for the ransom of many because some of them will be like angels transformed into men but they are not actually men because the salvation is intended only for mankind remember john chapter 3 verse 3 to 5 unless you are born again you cannot see the kingdom of god then he explained further unless you are born in water and spirit you cannot enter into the kingdom of god and then he explained what is that born in water and spirit if you are born in flesh then you can be born again in spirit so if you are not born in flesh then you cannot be reborn again in the spirit because how can you be born again if you are not born in flesh the requirement in order to enter the kingdom of god 
that she must be born in flesh, which is born in water, and born in the spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, the born from above. That is uh, the right interpretation for that John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5 and 6. Okay. Uh, is there any other questions, more questions um, from you? Uh, no, it's none for me. Okay. And uh, I, I hope and pray that uh, I know it is not uh, by one setting, it will not be fully comprehended. And that is the reason why when I started uh, studying this part during my early stage, of course, I'm trying to grasp and uh, absorb the things that what I'm trying to learn. But as time goes by deeper and deeper, you will come to know the truth. I don't know yet the whole, the, the, the whole truth, of course. Nobody knows the whole truth. Because that is the reason why, why God intended us to be part of the body of Christ. He will not expose all the truth in one person. It will be diverse in different persons so that you will be connected to one another. And that is the reason why also I keep on listening and studying from the different pictures, teachers, even from those people like from the the one who they are uh, trying to say that they they were from the Satan and then they were converted, become from the children of light, and they are testifying about the things what they are doing during uh, the time that they were under the curse of Satan. So I'm trying to relate that from the Bible because not of the, all of what they are saying, of course, it's true also because there are lots of deception under the kingdom or the rulership of Satan. And even from the church, within the church, there will be a lot of interpretation. They are claiming this, they are claiming And because of their belief, they are kind of going to connect it because on their claims, they are going to connect that kind of interpretation. So I'm trying to listen to the different denominations, uh, the different interpretations. Some are really observed. Uh, uh, means uh, totally, totally way, way, way uh, beyond from the truth because they are explaining it purely allegory. It means it's not literal. They're explaining it symbolical always, all, all symbolical. If the Bible is all symbolical, then we will be all loose. But I'm going to tell you one thing. The Bible is real. And what the Lord Jesus Christ is telling is all about real things. Only unless, if he said, if it is a vision or if it is a parable, that is another thing. But if he's telling it plainly, then that is real. It's not an allegory. It's not symbolical. That is true. Okay? So, if that is all, if there will be no more questions from, from the group, okay, then uh, we could end this now. So everybody's okay? Okay, so thank you very much, most especially to our Father, that uh, He has given us the chance, the most especially, our life that He has given unto us, that we were able to still to study His Word. That is already a, a blessing and a great from our Lord Jesus Christ, that we should be thankful of, that we were able to eat and drink and be happy in this life. But the happiness that we have compared to the happiness or the joy that we will have in the presence of our Lord Jesus cannot be compared to the joy and the happiness that we are experiencing. So the best life that they are talking about here on earth cannot be compared to the life that we will be having with our Lord Jesus Christ. Our best life is not here on earth. Our best life is with our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity to study your word. And we would like to express our gratitude and thankfulness with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, with all our strength. Because uh, in, 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 this, in our situation, who are we 
who are we and uh, that you will be mindful for us who are we that will be able to understand your word but praise be to the living god because you are not a respecter of persons either we are filipinos either we are other nationalities you are not a respecter of persons if you can speak to other people you can prophesy and give visions and understandings to other people you have laid it down also to your servant as well and to those who seek you and spirit of and in truth you will fill them as your promise in your word those who seek you they will find you and those who will search them with all their heart you will reveal yourself unto them father i pray for this group for these people listening and studying your word i pray that continually to strengthen and deepen their standing about the word of god most especially in the book of revelation father i pray that they will understand your whole purpose for, for this generation what are you going to do and what will happen for this generation because nothing is already concealed everything is already revealed it's only a matter of understanding what we are reading in the word of god and thank you father because you made it possible for us to understand it we give you praise we give you honor in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen amen thank you very much church may the blessings and the the protections of our lord jesus christ be upon you as you continue your work and uh, i know it is difficult but uh, nothing is too difficult with our Lord Jesus Christ. All things will be possible. And uh, just completely trust in Him. Whatever situations, whatever happens, he, he should be your first advisor, first counselor. You should, be, uh, you should not be seeking other means, but you should seek first, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness not other things he should be the first one in order to guide you and to lead you in his path again shalom to everyone have a blessed evening goodbye to everyone good night po. good night